In this presentation, we're going to take the payroll data for the month of November from the payroll register and create a journal entry in the general journal, post to the general ledger and create the trial balance. So to do that, uh, we're going to, we have the frozen panes here. So if your panes aren't frozen, you'll want to freeze them so we can work more easily. So that's going to be up here. You want to be up in A4, cell A4. We're going to go to the view tab. We're going to go to the windows and freeze panes. So then we can scroll down and we're going to uh, the November. I've made it green here just so we can work with these numbers and not get confused on them, hopefully, or get less confused. And so we're going to go to this tab now, the GL tab, the trial balance tab. Now, once here, what we want to do is make sure that we have the correct area to enter the data in. You can see that there's going to be some hidden cells the way I have mine set up so far. I'm going to first unhide all the cells and then we'll hide the cells that uh, we don't need to be looking at. So I'm going to put my cursor on anywhere outside the highlighted cells and then highlight the entire column and then highlight all cells. And then right click on the selected, I should say selected area, so highlighted selected area, and we are going to unhide. Okay, now there also may be frozen panes, so if something doesn't work quite right for you, you may have frozen, frozen the panes before, which would be in the view tab, windows, and frozen panes. We're going to want to unfreeze the panes. So the panes must be unfrozen before we can freeze it back up again. So now we're going to try to do this a bit faster and this will be to show us that, um, the, you know, the, the journal entries are going to be much the same from month to month. So uh, we're going to do this month and we're going to say, hey, you know what, the format, if we look at the last few months, are pretty much the same, right? The numbers could change and, and will typically from, from payroll to payroll. Of course, we're using a very symmetrical payroll system, you know, same amount of hours. So. Uh, our first calculation is different than the second, but the second and third are pretty much exactly the same. So I'm going to at least copy the formatting and say, well, hey, you know what? I can copy pretty much all of this. I'm going to copy from here down and say that journal entry will look pretty much the same. And then right click and copy that. And we're going to put that in cell T5, right click and paste. Uh, we, either way will work. I'm going to go one, two, three. All right. And then we're just going to pick up the numbers, which will probably pr be much the same as well. But I want to make sure to pick up the numbers from the correct register from the correct pay period, because typically those are things that will change. The, the accounts affected typically will not. So note what you can typically do from uh, period to period is construct the journal entry in much the same fashion, then pick up the new numbers from the new pay period register. Now that we have that set up, I'm going to hide all these journal entries to the left. So I'm going to put my cursor right on the R here with the have the drop down and then go all the way left, 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 left. And then there's selected cells and right click and hide. All right. Then we're going to do the same for the uh, data on this side of the line. So we're going to put our cursor on the X so it has a drop down and want to hide that. I'm going to hide all the way till AC and I want to keep AD to have that nice little space there. So we're going to right click on that and hide. Okay, so now we have our data sheet and we even have our accounts. So it's going to be much the same. It's going to have one journal entry that's going to be recording the salaries expense, then the payroll taxes for the employer portion, and then we will actually pay off the liabilities that we have created on the 15th of the month. So we're going to pick this up uh, from the register. So we're in V5. I'm just going to say equals. Go back to the register. And we're picking up this cell in J30. Uh, 30, J30. 30, and enter. Now we're going to pick up all of the taxes. I'm going to do that with a credit. So instead of hitting equals, we're going to say negative. And we're going to go back to our register and pick up. I'm going to go to the right a little bit. So we want to pick up everything under kind of like the red area. So here's the OASDI, enter. Here's the HI, we're going to say negative and go back to our register. Pick up the HI and that's Medicare, of course, and enter. Then we're going to go negative for the FIT, federal income tax, back to the register, 
federal income tax, FIT, enter. And then the group insurance, we're gonna say negative, go back to our register, group insurance, and enter. Then the union dues, we're just gonna say negative, go back to our register, union dues, enter. And then the retirement plan, we're gonna say negative, go back to our register, and 401k plan. And then we have the check that we're gonna have. Now, this of course we could take from the register, going back to the register here, <laughs> that 28, 424, but I like to use the kind of plug formula here, the debits minus the credits, and then uh, note that it should be equal to the net check, in essence, recalculating the net check. So we're gonna use our, our plug formula, is how I call it, the negative SUM, double click the sum function, and highlight the uh, debits and credits in this journal entry, and enter. So there's the 28, 424, 43. If we go back to the register, there's the 28 to 4, 24, 43 net check. Looks good, checks out, let's post. Uh, note that it's also in balance if you can highlight the whole thing, the debits minus the credits equals zero. Okay, so we're first gonna look for this 502, 502 on the trial balances down here. It's gonna be in the income statements, dark blue accounts, same order on the general ledger. So we're gonna scroll to the right, we've got the assets, we've got the liabilities, we've got revenue and expenses in the dark blue we're looking for salaries and wages expense right here in bm 21 i'm going to say the date is 12 1. now i didn't freeze the panes so now we're just going to say equals and if, if you can't freeze the panes if it's locked or something like that just you, you the best way to do it i think is just to hold down the left arrow or one way you can do it is hold down the left arrow until you hit the screen or just pull this all the way over till you get to the end and then we just need to go up to uh, where we want and pick up that number that we want, 502. To do that, you kind of have to memorize um, that you're looking for account 502. Okay, so then we have that, and it brings the balance up to 193, 128, 40, uh, 50 for the payroll expense. If we scroll back to the income statement, we can see that that has increased here, and that will, of course, bring net income down net income starting at that 500,000 before all those transactions and note of course there would be other activity going on other than payroll during the year but we're just showing some income so you can see what will show on the income statement and what what um will show on the balance sheet so you can see that distinction as we go through uh the year here so this 500,000 is the only other activity other than payroll that we have uh, right now just so we can demonstrate the net income uh, decreasing over time due to solely concentrating on payroll okay so now we're going to go back up and we're going to freeze the pains for the rest of them so we're going to go up and we're going to make this less painful by freezing the pains we're in cell ad2 ad2 we want to then go to the tabs up top in the view tab then we're going to go to the windows group and we want to select the freeze pane then we're going to sec select the freeze pain and there we have it now the pain should be frozen and we're going to go to account 215 215 is here on the trial balance it's going to be in the same order on the general ledger so we're going to scroll to the right we're looking for account 215 there it is 215 we're going to scroll down to as 15 date 12 1 we're in at 15 equals and we're going to point to w6 that 2002 61 61 and enter so that brings us up to 2002 61 61 now we're looking for 220 which should be pretty close it's right next to it so i'm just going to post them all out here before we go back to the trial balance and check it going a little bit faster here so we're going to say this happened on 12 1 as well and we are in cell AX15 equals, we're going to point to the 69712 and enter. Now we're looking for FIT 225, also a liability, also in the uh, orange area here, 225. Looks like it's over to the right. So it's, I'm in BE12, date 121. Then we're in BF12. We're going to say equals and point to the 8,404.13. 
bringing the balance up to 8,404.13. Then we're looking for account uh, 247. 247 is going to be to the right, it looks like, and possibly down a bit. Yes, there it is. So we're down here in BI24. We're going to say the date of 121. And we are now in BJ24 equals. And we're going to scroll back up and pick up that cell in W11. Enter. Bringing the balance up from 8,32260 by 2,774.20211,096.80. Then uh, we're going to go to the checking account, which is our count 100. That's going to be way on the other side. So I'm going to put my cursor right on the left side of the frozen panes and scroll right and that'll pop us back over to where we want to be. And we're looking for the checking account, the first account. We're here in AK12, date 12-1. AL12, we're going to say that equals and point to the checking account in W12. That bringing the balance up from or bringing the balance down from 467, 14205 by 28,424 to 438, 7, uh, 62. Okay, let's see if we're in balance. I'm going to put my cursor right to the left side of the frozen panes and scroll right. Scroll down and see if we ha are in balance. We are not. I've missed, I have missed something. All right, let's see. 5516 uh, is what we're out of balance by. Okay, so we're obviously missing these two accounts. That was done intentionally in order to see how the double entry accounting system works. I'm gonna highlight those. I'm gonna make those a different color now just to um, show what they are. And the reason, the way I found that out pretty quickly is one, I should have recognized that number, 5516. And then I went through here and I, I traced where these accounts are going. I can see these are going somewhere by using these icons up top. You can get those on the data tab or the formula tab and here they are so i put them in the quick toolbar but if i trace two i could say oh that's going somewhere that's going somewhere that's going somewhere this isn't this isn't and those are the problems and then you can kind of remove those arrows and now we can finish the process so we're looking for 243 account 243 scrolling to the right we have 243 group insurance scrolling down we're going to say on 12 1 uh, cell BF24 equals scrolling up just a bit and picking up that 5501. Then we got the last one on 245. So we're going to scroll up just a bit. Here's 245 union dues BI9. We're going to say 12 1. And then in BJ9 uh, <laughs> equals. And we're going to point to that 16 and enter. That brings the balance up from 48 by 16 to 64. If we put our cursor right to the left side of the frozen panes and go right just a bit, we'll see that those two accounts should then have been input as well. We should be back in balance as we are there. So uh, accounting system is working again. That's good. The debits uh, minus the credits on the income statement. Net income went down by the wages the other portion went to the liabilities accounts here are the liability accounts that have been affected which we will then need to pay fairly soon however before we do we're going to record the payroll uh, liabilities for the employer portion as well as the payroll taxes for the employer portion i'm going to make these uh, un green again so i'm going to do that with the paintbrush so i'm going to highlight the whole row above it because I want it to look like that row. I'm going to go to the home tab. I'm going to go to the clipboard group and the paintbrush within the clipboard group and then highlight the cells that uh, we want to reformat. All right now we're on 12.1. Uh, we're on the payroll expense, the liability portion. So if we go back to our register, we have mimicked this part of it to the paycheck. Now we're going to this part of it the employer taxes including uh, OASDI, Social Security, HI, Medicare, FUTA, Federal Unemployment, and SUTA, State Unemployment. Now these two of course are uh, we've seen before because there's one half taken out of the paycheck, one half paid by the employer. These two we have not seen in the prior journal entry because they are employer only taxes. 
So we're going to scroll back to, the, or we're just going to click back to, or to the tab of the GL. And we're just going to pick up, I'm going to pick up the liabilities first. And then the expense will be the sum of those liabilities. So we're in W15. We're going to say instead of equals, because it is a credit, a negative. And then go back to the payroll register. And we want to pick up the OASDI in U30. U30. And then we're in uh, W15, W16, negative. And then go back to the register and we're going to pick up the 697.12. And then there's nothing in Suta or Futa, Futa or Suta, because uh, those are typically things that will run out uh, and no more taxes be due after the first few pay periods because of that low cap. Okay, so now we're going to do the negative sum plug formula to get the debit, which will be the payroll tax expense. So to do that, we'll say negative instead of equals SUM. I'm going to do it all with the keyboard this time. So I'm going to click Shift F9, down arrow one time, Shift right, down, down, down. And we could close it up with Shift 0. So if you use the keys, the keyboard, the more you use the keyboard, the more geeky you are, which is, of course, a positive thing. So now we're going to go to um, 520 is our account. 520 will be down here in uh, way down towards the bottom of the trial balance. Same order for the general ledger. So we're going to go to the right. We have the assets. We have the liabilities and we have the capital. We have the revenue and the expenses. We're looking for the taxes, payroll taxes. It's over here in BQ. The date will be 12-1. We are in BR9 and we're going to say equals. Scroll down just a bit. Make sure you're in the right journal entry here. We could have made it green again, but we'll do that maybe on the next one. We're picking up this number on V14, bringing the balance up from uh, 12,677.58 up by... 2009 to 15 I'm going to scroll all the way. Well, let's go put our cursor right to the left side of the frozen paints and go right. And note that that portion is a uh, income statement account, which is bringing down net income. Note that the payroll taxes that we have here are only including the employer ta payroll taxes. The employee payroll taxes are included in the salaries and wages expenses here because they're not our payroll taxes they're not something that we the employer are paying we just took it out of the employee's paycheck okay so then we're going to go to the 215 uh, which is here on the trial balance same order on the general ledger scrolling to the right looking for 215 there's the assets here's the liabilities 215 here it is fica we're going to scroll down to as 16 date 12 1 we are now in at 16 where we will say equals make sure you're picking up the right one we're looking for this one although it will be the same because this is the employer portion this is the employee portion of the fi or the fica for social security now we're looking for the fica for uh medicare which is hi or account 220 220 we are in cell AW16, the date being 12-1. We are in AX16, we're going to say equals and point two W16. That'll bring the balance up and it looks much the same as the prior transaction in the GL for FICA HI, so uh, Medicare, because this too, as part of the FICA, has a matching type of principle. And uh, so we have uh, the employer and the employee portion, in other words. So if we scroll back to the right, uh, we should be back in balance here. Let's scroll down and see if we see the green zero at the bottom, which would indicate that debits do indeed equal the credits, which is nice. Okay, so now we're on the last uh, journal entry. What we've done now, we've entered the, em the employer portion, uh, the employee paycheck portion, and the employer portion uh, for the payroll. Now we're going to assume that we need to make the payment for all these liabilities that have been incurred uh, on behalf of the employees taking the withholdings out and for the employer portion and now pay them to whoever we need to pay them to, mainly the federal government. 
Okay, so let's do that journal entry. And this is going to happen on the 15th. So note we are obviously jumping forward in time a bit for that to happen. Okay, so to do that, uh, we're just going to um, make these zero. These are going to go down just like a payable account. We're just going to pay it off and pay it off with cash. So we're going to debit these accounts because these are credits and we need to do the opposite thing to make them go down. So this one's got 4,531.21 in it. So we're just going to say debit 4,523.21. And this one's got, uh, I'm going to debit that, 1394.25. And then uh, the federal income, there's nothing in the futa or suta, which is nice. That'll make it a little bit faster. Uh, because once again, they would be there if it was the beginning of the pay period. And note, if you're just jumping into a payroll cycle, if you're in the beginning of the pay period, you'll be dealing with futa and suta. And you'll start to be kind of shocked at the end that uh, it goes away, kind of. And if, and if you've only dealt with the end payroll periods within a year you won't see futa and suta so those things are things can kind of throw off the payroll process when you're looking at just one pay period depending if it's the beginning or ending of the year anyways fit federal income tax we're going to say is 8404.13 and then the checking account is what's going to be paid for those items if we highlight the three of them it comes out to 14 321 59 coming out of our checking account we're going to do that with the plug formula the negative sum formula starting with instead of equals negative sum we're going to do this all with the keyboard this time so i'm going to type shift f9 up arrow one time hold down shift left up up and then we could close it up with a shift zero which we don't really need to if you didn't do that it'll still kind of do it for you you can note that it'll and it won't even won't even give you an error sign Okay, so there we have that. And now we're going to uh, post this out. So there's 215. So here's 215 on the trial balance, third uh, liability account. We might want to make, by the way, if I was kind of stopping in the middle there, but we might want to make this one green since we have a lot of journal entries here now and we want to make sure we're picking up the right one. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to highlight this, right click on it, make it green. That's what we want to post. That's, that way we can do it a little bit more in a kind of brain dead fashion and still get the job done correctly so we're going to go to the left we're looking for accounts 215 215 215 where's 215 looks like it's here in as and at we're going to be down on line 17 the date's going to be 12 15 we are in at 17 at this time and i'm going to say equals and point to that 4523.21 in v20 that brings the balance down to zero. Then we're looking for accounts 220, 220. If we scroll back up, we see 220 in AW and AX columns, respectively. If we scroll back down, we are in AW 17. Date will be 1215. We're in AX 17, where we will say equals. Scroll down to the green numbers we're looking for. We want to pick up that 1,394.25 in cell V21, bringing the balance down from 1,394.25 by 1,394.25 to zero. Now we want the account uh, 225. So we're going to skip a couple of columns here, a couple of columns skipped, and we're going to scroll back up and we're looking for columns B, E, and B, F for account 125. We're in row 13, date. 12 15 we're in cell bf 13 we're going to say that that equals scrolling back down picking up our number that fourth that or 8404 13 bringing the balance down to zero now we just need to post the cash account so i'm going to go right that's going to be the first account clearly it's our favorite account don't like it that it's going down like this but anyway we're going to go right to the left side of the um frozen pains and then go right and we're going to pick up the cash account which is up here in uh, AK and AL we are in AK 13 we're going to say the date is 12 15 and then in AL 13 we'll say this equals and find that last account to pick up 14 3 21 59 bring the balance down from 438 7 17 62 by 14 3 22 about to uh, 424 39603 if we go back to our trial balance and see if we are in balance 
we are that's good note that this journal entry does not affect the income uh, statement at all no income or, and or expense accounts in other words what it does do is it brings down the payable accounts down to zero and it affects cash bringing cash down in a similar fashion as our most popular most common and favorite payable the uh, uh, famous or infamous accounts payable which goes up when uh, we buy something on account and it goes down when we pay it off and note when we when the payable goes down no effect on income because income statement the net income net income went up when the payable was incurred not when it was paid okay last thing let's just make these uh, green accounts blue again we want to make those green out green accounts blue so we're going to highlight uh, the cells above it. We're going to use the paintbrush in order to do this. We're going to go to the home tab, clipboard group, paintbrush, select that paintbrush. Then we're going to highlight the green cells that we want blue, and that should make them blue. Uh, note that I, I indented them because I picked up a cell apparently that had an indent in it. So I'm just going to highlight these um, and go to the home tab, <laughs> alignment and decrease that indentation. I'll do that here too, just so that. Okay, so it looks good. 